Chi Hua Chen, partner at Kleiner Perkins. Uh, Chi Hua, the mobile first uh, crunch up event uh, mm -hmm. in Palo Alto. Uh, you talked about three areas, three different economic sectors where you believe mobile will revolutionize yeah. business. Could yeah. you talk about those? Sure. So Eric asked the question whether mobile was going to just be a bunch of features or if there were significant companies to be created. And his argument was that a lot of the applications that we see today feel like features that should exist as part of the mobile platform. So I uh, offered three ideas of companies that we'd like to invest in that are solving huge market needs that we think would absolutely be companies, not just features. The first idea is essentially something that will make me more efficient. It will save me time and make sure that all of the uh, scheduling and administrative complexity associated with you know, our lives is relegated to the cloud and is an application that exists on your mobile device. That essentially is the idea that if you and I are going to have dinner, we're scheduled to have dinner at Il Fornaio in Palo Alto, you live in San Francisco and work in San Francisco, I live and work in Menlo Park, if dinner's scheduled for 7 o'clock and you're still at your office at 6 o'clock and there's a traffic jam on 101, the phone knows where you are. It knows that our reservation, because of our calendars on our mobile devices, that our reservation was for 7. It knows that there's traffic along the 101 and there's no way that you're going to get there in time. And it can be integrated with an open table API, which would enable that reservation to be instantly pushed back half an hour, a notica notification sent to both of us. We click OK. We can push to call. We can push to text. And all of that, which would have taken you know, a bunch of text messages back and forth, maybe a phone call back and forth, a phone call to the restaurant, that can all be solved automatically with software. So essentially saving a ton of time for people, that's a big market opportunity. So the, the first one is what you call a fully automated personal assistant. Yeah, yeah. Number two? Number two. So the first one, let's call it make me more efficient. The two second one. Well, you one already seem is... pretty efficient. I can't you imagine. <laughs> Are you? Have you already got one of these things? No, I don't, but I'd love to pocket? fund one. I'd love to fund one. The second one is education. Make me smarter. Well, you so seem very education... smart. You were at Stanford. How smart, smarter could you be? <laughs> Plenty. Look at Wikipedia. Look at all the information that's available to learn. Today, classroom orientation and curricular orientation is what really drives the educa educational process. You sit, your children sit in a classroom with 30 other students. Those students move at the exact same pace, even though they may learn differently. Your child may learn better with video. My child may learn better with uh, complete, completing the sentence exercises. Another child may learn better by using voice exercises back and forth for a concept, right? This device is certainly capable from a compute perspective and sensor perspective of delivering each of those experiences. But more importantly, it can figure out which one you're better at learning with and customize. Math for you is video. History is going to be audio. How does that device know that math for me is video? Because it can, it can measure how quickly the software, the software that, that I think should be designed and built into a company, it can measure how quickly you learn concepts depending on the modality with which you're learning them. So this is a device that knows me in some ways better than I know myself. Absolutely. It can measure all of that. And so think about how much education as a system could be revolutionized if every single child was sitting in the classroom with a device that could teach them the subject matter in the way that they best can learn it. That's a very efficient, that's, that's, a, that's a dramatic improvement in the way education works today. Make Mar me smarter. Real big market need. I thought the American education system is working pretty well, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Go look at the test scores. Not doing so great. And number three? Yeah, number three which is, is even bigger, if anything, than the first two. Number three is make me healthier. I think everybody who's, not everybody, but plenty of people who watch this show wish they could be healthier. As they're, they're eating all, their yeah, third hand well, they're all, in the morning. Well, they're all techies, and we're all sitting behind our computers, you know, typing away at the keyboard where we should be out uh, running, running around the block. And this device is with you all the time. It can sense where you are. It can sense what you're doing, it can sense whether you're climbing stairs, if you're running, if you're biking, all this information. This is a sensor-packed device that's only going to become more and more aware of every activity that you're participating in. It is also with you all the time. And one of the most important things about health management is constant reminders and reinforcement about the right kind of behavior. It's not that you and I don't know that we need to take a walk, you know, well, uh, once a day, every, every other day in order to stay healthy. It's that maybe we're not reminded of it or maybe the incentives aren't correct for us to do this. 
this device is with you all the time and it can display for you and help you understand what are the benefits of exercise. It can be your coach in your pocket and also with the information that you have with the camera nowadays and other sensors that might be in here, it can take, you know, you can take pictures of the food that you're eating, caloric content and provide estimates for how you're doing in terms of your health. That's a big idea.